Climate Action News brought to you by We Don't Have Time and a Sustainable Tomorrow. My name is Katarina rolf Jansson and I'm the host of this program. Mr. Sameli is a serial entrepreneur and investor. He has founded and chaired a number of Sweden's most lauded companies within strategy, marketing, advertising and digital communication. Sameli is a member of the UNICEF Global Advisory Group. It's great to have you with us here today, Kofi Alex Sameli. Thank you. Lovely to be here. You have a very strong focus on innovation. When you read about what you have achieved in your career, innovation is always there uh, in, in mind. So what is your take on how we can use innovation uh, to enable even more sustainable development in the world? No, I'm a true believer in that innovation and entrepreneurship yeah, and mostly as a combination, of course, they can uh, achieve amazing things in the world uh, for, for companies, for societies. And uh, I think we only have seen the beginning of, of the power of entrepreneurship and, in, and innovation uh, applied in the sustainability area and other areas. Like when I started my, fir my first uh, company, I had not a clue of that, what I could achieve, but I together with my colleagues created a company that became the most innovative in the world in an industry that had worked for the same, in the same way for quite a long time. And we applied our, our innovative, innovative skills and mindset on, especially on the talent process. How can we be better to attract, select, introduce and develop people? And, and that skill sets now I'm trying to apply in, in other companies to, to make them grow and become in, innovative. And, and, and also I, I think, a lot of the importance when you build a company, a company is like if you work with your internal core capacities, like the talent process, the sales process, the product or service process, then you find small tweaks that can make this uh, your company or your service or your product better. And a lot of the, the cases that also gives uh, impact from a, a sustainability perspective, you, you, you use less resources, you take care of your stakeholders uh, in the society, and then you keep your employees for a longer time, uh, for example. So it's, I'm, I'm a true optimist, even in this, time, uh, in this uh, year of the pandemic. You talk about talent, and how do we make sure that we don't lose talent in the wake of the pandemic? Because I mean, a lot of people, companies have to they let people get, go in, 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 in this crisis. How do we not lose talent? And, and when we lose talent, we risk losing tempo and momentum and, and addressing the work to create a more sustainable world. I think there are two answers, of course, that one way of looking at it is that we, we, we it, a lot of destruction is now happening. A lot of good things go, uh, 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 will go away. But there are also creative part of destruction, how sad it can sound. But, uh, the, the capitalistic system is also built on crisis. Like it's always something that is uh, challenging. It. And now this is probably the biggest challenge, challenge that we have had for 100 years, but it's still it's a, big, a big challenge. And resources and clever, good people will always find, always find a way through a crisis. And I think that it's not only this, uh, like uh, destructive destruction, it's also creative destruction happening and in a case like this. One of the companies I'm now involved in uh, starting, uh, I think we will talk about that a bit later. And then we, we rather see opportunities now in the, in the area of COVID-19 or the decade or the year of COVID-19 because our innovation that we made before COVID-19 is helping people to get better sanitation, get better access to, to their own bathrooms, uh, better housing. And that was important before last year, but it's even more relevant in a year when everybody talks about social distance, distancing and, and how can you keep your, yourself clean? How can you wash your hands? I mean, many parts of the world, that's not uh, possible. And so, so there I see, and so, so I think uh, talented people can also be sucked up with new companies that establish themselves. We can see now Zoom that the uh, technology we now using it's of course booming in the decade of COVID-19. Everybody needs online meetings. The same with online doctors. In, in, in some countries that you and I know well about, like Sweden, there people have been very upset. Oh, how can you have online doctors? And now everybody loves the online doctor. Of course, 
And we were, so we changed our mindset in a couple of months from what was good uh, six months ago and now what's good now. Now everybody sends uh, government money to save airline companies because everybody understands the world needs travels. Even the animals in Africa where I live needs travels because tourists uh, in, into Africa is a protection for the species. The only way for the, for the animals to survive is that the people care about them and they care about them if we have tourism. If we have no tourism, then the, the species will die. So I, so it's, I also have a quite a, like optimistic view that even if it's a lot of bad things that happens, it will also uh, move resources to other areas where they can do maybe even better, like in, in the company I'm starting in Zoom or in Kry, the, the online doctor in Sweden that you and I know about. Well, thank you. I'm sure there are many viewers that would disagree on the on the need to support the airlines, but that's another discussion. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's I don't. I don't think we should support them, but I think the need of travel and tourism is uh, is quite important. Mm. Let's talk. Let's talk a bit more about your the company that you have founded in in in, uh, in South Africa. It's it's a fantastic uh, company that's called Bitprop, and it enables um, property owners. Uh, particularly women, to, to get an income, um, to asset, uh, to, to get the pension asset, and also it creates more sustainable homes. And all of this work is based on the sustainable development goals. Could you please tell us more about this company? No, it's, it's like, it started from an idea. The, the co-founder, uh, Zimbabwean man called Glenn Jordan and me, we, we like came to the same conclusion together. And he's the true innovator of this company, not me, I'm the co-founder. Like I was uh, searching for a way of, uh, of creating, uh, giving uh, title deeds to, to poor people. How can you and I, we have our own house or at least our own flat and we own it and we take care of it and that's make the environment where we live better and so on. In many parts of the world, people have no ownership of the land where they live. They are tenants like, like it was in, in many, our part, in the European part of the world, hundreds of years ago. And we were luckily enough to have self-owning farmers quite early in Sweden, for example. And that created, of course, these are entrepreneurs, the, the farmers that own their own farm, they were more innovative and they were more productive than farmers that worked for someone else. But that power of self-owning has, has a, many parts of the world hasn't seen that. So I was thinking about, okay, how can we, and I was supporting a lot of NGO initiatives. We gave away me and my wife and my family money to these kind of initiatives but then of course when you do it in the NGO way you need to get the donors and, and money and so on and so together with uh, my co-founder Glenn Jordan uh, we developed a model where we build a backyard rental units for ladies that lives in the townships like the the, the informal settlements in in, in Africa and create the revenue stream through a rental income that they get when they rent it out to other people. Because urbanization is, is big in, in Europe, but it's even bigger in Africa. Like people move to big cities and they, they uh, uh, live in terrible circumstances in, in informal settlements and townships. And, and everybody in the stance that we need to upgrade infrastructure there with better housing, better um, uh, sanitation and so on. Uh, but nobody had found a sustainable model of doing that. Uh, it requires a lot of funding. And what we've done, we like put together a micro lending model with a with a, uh, Airbnb model and with a model where we create a lady to become a landlord. She becomes an entrepreneur. And as a side effect, we create a lot of jobs for a builder, a local builder in the township that builds the rental flats that the lady then can rent out. And so basically, if they have a they yeah. both start to interrupt, but they uh, just to make sure that I and the viewers understand, uh, they have the ownership of, of the land, uh, but you make sure that they can prove it and, and build on it an additional uh, home for somebody else that they can rent out. Uh, in a, in a, in, uh, uh, some of them owns it already, both, both in the legal uh, uh, first world sense. Everybody controls the land, but they maybe don't have the paperwork that they control, they, but the community has approved them as the, the rightful owner. Uh -huh. We help them to create the, the legal ownership or in, in other ways and, and create, show that they own the land so we can build on that 
uh, property to them. And what we do then, we don't own that. The lady owns everything. The only thing that we, and then we, then we share the rental revenue from the tenants that get better housing. So the tenants get better housing, the builder gets more uh, job through that we funnel in capital into the poorest areas, and the lady get a significant increase of income. Like she gets already from the month one without investing anything except for her, her own uh, plot. She uses the backyard of her small plot and create her, she gets a, equal to a government pension in, in South Africa. So, so we, it's a significant impact on her living standard and conditions. And over time, she can also, we have seen this example already now, she invests in the property and can then charge a bit more and then build more property. So the, the idea is to do this in the whole world in the poor areas because we now found a way of doing it in, in a scalable way because the investor that puts in money gets uh, uh, interest on their money because there are people pay quite high uh, rents in the townships because it's so many people that want to live close to the city centers in around the, all over the world uh, and then we can use that to to achieve all of this and the, Back to your, your, your original question, in what way is this sustain, sustainable then? And so, yeah, because we, all the stakeholders benefit from us doing this. Our take on this is only like scaling. We, it's sort of an IKEA model, Airbnb model, uh, uh, applied in a town, township. And, uh, and in the township, sort of this has, done, has been done before, but in a very informal, non-scalable way. And then when an, an entrepreneur with financial resources and, and ambition like we had, then we can go in there and try to do, okay, is this possible to scale? Can we do this in a way that this is possible to do um, uh, all over the world? And that's what we've done last year and now scaling this year. And- well, uh, so, Patrick, where, where, are you, where are you advancing in what other parts of the world are you, are you implementing this idea? Right now is we're only in South Africa, but we have 32 units. Yeah, right now, when we are talking, the, the South Africa is in a lockdown, so we can't do anything right now except from planning the next phase and so on. But uh, 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 the model has already, we had this. first of June last year, we had the first tenants moving in. So we have experimented with the, with the model. Also, during lockdown now, we had of the 18 tenants that is in, in already functional units that's up running, 17 was paying their rent in May. So even if people uh, like they, so, so the, the informal structure in the townships works quite well. So in a in the, uh, more structured formal economy, less people pay the rents because here the tenants pay to the lady that they know that lives on their plot. And as we normally, uh, most of us has tried Airbnb, it works quite well because you care about things in another way when you rent from a person than from a hotel. And that's why it's a trust-based system. And we have applied that in the townships. Well, it sounds like a fabulous idea and a great business model. Uh, and, and also that you're focusing on women. I understand that that's not a coincidence, is it? No, because all research and knowledge from the, I've, I've talked to the high level people in UN about that, shows that, <laughs> that if you should, given opportunity to and can choose, then you should choose a woman because the likelihood that she, she, she keep her promise and, and uh, behave in the system is higher than with a man. So unfortunately for me and good for you, that, that be, so it's a, but, and also again, like it's pure, like what model will be most successful? And then we focus on women. And of course that the development goals has a lot of focus on the women. So a side effect of us trying to execute this model in the best possible way is that we're supporting women and, and kids because where it's a woman, uh, there is mostly kids as well. And, and I think that this is also the fantastic thing with innovation entrepreneurship. Like we, 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 when we started to do this, we hadn't decided that we should do females. But when we start executing and thinking and, and looking at best practice, then we realize, okay, we have to focus on females first. We will probably take men uh, over time, but we will limit the risk uh, while taking uh, females uh, in the beginning and see if, if uh, and so far it has worked uh, fantastically well with the entrepreneurs that we helped to create already. 
So you will continue this work as, as soon as uh, it's permitted to, to when you come out of the lockdown in South Africa. Um, when, you, when, when we look at the pandemic uh, and look at what's going on in the world, what risks do you see that there will be um, a slowing down of, I mean, you've, you've invested and started many companies. Uh, yeah. Is there a risk and, and how do we meet this risk of, of be, being less money being funneled into sustainable uh, companies focusing on sustainability and uh, even more acutely uh, climate action? I'm not sure if I have a good answer on that because that's a, comp of course, very complex issue. But I, I think the need is, great, is bigger. Uh, I think that companies and uh, entrepreneurs and uh, needs to do more rather than uh, than uh, looking at um, the traditional way of doing aid. Like it's, I think it's, uh, and I, I've got tremendous support for Bitprop from you and another because they want examples of how entrepreneurship can create the, without a lot of government or aid money we create things the only thing we ask for that the government gives us approval to build and they do they are quite we found local governments in south africa that's quite pragmatic it's much quicker to build where we build now than it is in the the more formal areas because the local local government understands that we try to do good and then they are helping us with the approval process and make that a bit quicker. And then we, that helps our, our business model. So I think it's a lot of taking away uh, bureaucracy and red tape and let good entrepreneurs and good money uh, fuel the, the global economy. And hopefully COVID-19, we have seen that in the crisis management of the crisis, a lot of red tape is gone now. Now, okay, as we discussed, the online doctors is completely accepted because now it feels nearly ridiculous. How could we be opposed using online technology to to cure to to for for healthcare? Well, that's and now every it's necessary of the COVID because of the COVID. And I think we will see a lot of these kind of effects all over the uh, all over the world. But I'm, as you, as you hear, I'm I'm not I can't I'm not as an economist or can see it in that way. I can see that on the micro level that we need more entrepreneurship. We need less bureaucracy where you governments and councils stops entrepreneurs from doing good. I'm a bit worried that the lockdown keeps going on too long and that the financial effects are so severe. So the uh, so the um, it creates more poverty than necessary. Uh, for example, in South Africa right now, when we are talking, it's a uh, 200 plus cases, and we've been in lockdown for seven weeks. So it's like. And that it's seven weeks in an economy where people have money, mostly where a, day, a lot of people are day workers. It's not that easy. How do you keep, and then people start starving and then you get problems that are even more severe. And we can see it in a developed economy in, in Europe as well, that the, the side effects of, of, of the lockdown is quite severe. So, so I hope that, um, that it will be a more balanced approach going forward that you try to keep also people's possibility to sustain themselves and uh, going. Well, it's not, it's, it's, it's not really, really not easy decisions to make and it requires strong leadership and, and well-informed leaders, etc. cetera. Um, speaking of leaders, uh, uh, all of my guests get the same final question and it's about climate leadership. Uh, since we do focus primarily, the main focus on this program is, is climate action and both sustainability, but also climate action. Um, do you have any, any good examples of climate leadership? And what does climate leadership mean to you, Kofred uh, to, to I'm looking at it from a, again, from a more micro perspective. I think good leadership is to take responsibility for what you do yourself in your own capacity, in your family, in your companies, to your employees, to your uh, all people that are depending on you uh, as an entrepreneur. And then what can you do to, to, to do good when you execute your, if you are an entrepreneur in your business? That's where it starts and ends. And if people all over the world show leadership and try to do good where they are, uh, it's, it creates enormous effects all over the world. Like, uh, so, so when you broadcast this program because you're passionate about what you, in these questions, you, 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 you give energy to other people and, and entrepreneurship is therefore my answer like um, entrepreneurship and innovation as we started to talk about is the 
one of the few real sustainable ways of creating sustainable solutions. So we need thousands and millions of big props <laughs> that create change on the micro level. A lot of the sustainability discussion is on a political, like high level agenda with a lot of talking. But I think what the world needs is a lot of doing on, on the ground. And we can see a lot of it, but it's sometimes hard to scale and so on. So I think what the, if the political leadership and, and the governments and so on can do is to make it easier for people that has uh, a great ideas to execute them in their country or in their city. As example, this good local local government in, in South Africa that makes it possible for us to experiment with a completely new model uh, because they understand we try to do something good. Well, thank you very much for sharing your insights, Carl Felix Amelie, and best of luck with your fantastic work uh, in South Africa. And uh, let's hope it spreads to other parts of the world. Thank, thank you. you again. And for all of you viewers, thank you for, for staying with us and watching this episode. And uh, we'll be back next week with another one. And uh, meanwhile, go into the We Don't Have Time platform, the app, and share your climate love to companies that really do uh, pull their load. And you can also uh, join A Sustainable Tomorrow if you're based in Scandinavia and uh, join us on our events and meetings and conferences. Great to have you with you, uh, us here on this show, and see you again soon. Bye-bye. Coming up next week, Nasreen Alamin is the founder and executive director of Search Africa, a community-based organization that helps people understand the threats posed by the climate crisis and devising coping strategies to reduce its impact.